Hello everybody and welcome once again to Mechanism 110. At the end of the last episode, we did all quintupling. And I'd laid out basically the machines going from the right hand side, no, from the left hand side to the right hand side. And I ba uh, in between episodes I moved them all around, so it's actually really starting from the left hand side, from the right hand side going to the left hand side over here. And ending up with the sulfur dioxide that we need for the, uh, oops, I didn't mean to do that, did I? Got the wrong thing in my hand. For the chemical dissolution chamber. So that's now full of sulfuric acid, sulfuric acid, and I've actually got that set to high, so that's turned on. Now, let's have a quick test of this. What I've done here is in the logistical sorters, I've I moved these around as well. And if I right click this one, You'll see that now, if I move down a little bit, I've added in gold ore and osmium ore. I think gold ore, yes. So gold ore and osmium ore now go to the aqua in, uh, channel. And all the other ores go to the bright green channel. Now the bright green channel, if you remember rightly from last time, is this one here. And for what I've done here, let me just change this mode on this thing, because it's obviously in wrench mode to item mode and right click this is now bright green and the chemical injection chamber is aqua what I did is I raised these all up one level so that I could then color I had to color code them otherwise they would join together and I didn't want them to join together here so this is now a new one which is pink so this basically goes into the hopper for the um, in, for the for the metallurgic infuser it's a very confusing way now so then basically that's that so as a quick test let's get on and just do something we can take say a half a stack of gold i'll take a stack and then halve it and put it take a stack halve it and put it back again like this so now i've only got half so when we put that into here for the process we should end up with um two and a half stacks of gold dust Put that in there and let it get on with it. So this first of all it's going to come into here and it's going to go into the chemical oh, it was already gone. And going to come out here, I think, underneath here, which you can't see anymore. As uh let's have a quick look in here. We should see it coming in. Yes, there we go. Some gold crystals. The gold crystals have rerouted out, so now go back into the normal processing into here, so the basically the elite injection chamber. They're getting converted fairly quickly into... Well, you can't even see what's going on, in fact. It's too fast. To these gold shards. And then it goes through the rest of the process. I also replaced the transporter down here to Elite Transporter. And as you can see, they're moving much faster compared to the basic one up here. I'm going to leave basic because it's interesting. The other thing I did is I could take, say, a stack of cobblestone here two stacks yes I oh, know one stack will do and I could put this cobblestone into I think it's this one down the bottom here if I'm not mistaken it should get taken maybe I should wait and the idea of that is it's going to produce gunpowder so if we actually have a look at the recipe for gunpowder it's here so that can be made in the crusher crushing flint now the recipe flint can be made from the enrichment chamber and all around from gravel in the purification chamber and the recipe of gravel is cobblestone in the crusher so if we crush cobblestone it'll end up as gravel and then we purify that and it'll end up as flint and eventually it'll end up as gunpowder i think i put it in the right one it hasn't been taken yet probably because the gold's just too busy being taken out and it wants to go into the crusher which is being used at the moment for gold clumps I might have put it in the wrong place anyway something else to note here if I want to say put this cobblestone back away I've got to see if you look at my inventory now I've got cobblestone here and here if I want to put this back into here simply right door right click here nothing happens it's still in my inventory but if I have something else in my hand cobblestone or anything let's say baked potatoes double right click that and you'll see the numbers jumped up and the cobblestone disappeared from my inventory 
that's that. Now, there is one thing that I'm going to, while well, this is processing, let's go and do the other thing I want to show you. Here I've got two, two sandstone. I'm going to put them down. What I want to do is I want to show you how to cover up these pipes. A lot of people don't like pipes being visible. And one way you can do it, because the mechanism doesn't have any covers, is to use chisel and bits. So what we want to do here is take a chisel. In fact, I've already got a bag full of chisely bits anyway. Let's put that in this space here. And have a look at the bag. So I've got lots of sandstone bits in here already chopped up. And what you can do with it is easy enough. Just turn this into a plane and you can then simply plane. If I left click this, you can just planes away bits like that. And then you can get the whole box and it, that's the next layer underneath. So then we just have more bits into our inventory. So I've got 64 chisel bits here. Take this bucket out of the way. And the rest of them have gone into this bag here. What you can do with this, with the bits here, you can put them down. Now at the moment it's set to one bit. So if I hold down the, the mouse button, uh, the alt button, I can then change this to a plane. So click it like that. So then it puts down a plane. What you want to do is basically, what I do is put down a plane like this, dig it up. And then with this plane, let's have a look at that, get that out of the way, take the plane, it's at the bottom. Now I can put the plane down again. So I put the plane down again and then holding down the shift I can move it up. So I can move it up to here like that and then right click that. So that now gives me a plane at the top and I can do that. Um, and basically what I want to do now is to copy that. So what I do is you take a positive chisel design like this and you want to capture this chisel pattern so basically all you need to do now is it's an empty one the recipe for this is fairly straightforward one lap is one bucket of water and one piece of paper produces a, a chis positive chisel design so basically what I do is you take this and I think you simply just simply left click or right click this so now the, now so now this has got the positive design in it and then all you need to do is take this positive design with your chisel bag and bits and just put it down like this. And you'll see, and it also works around pipes as well. You can do it like that. So if you want to hide your pipes, that's one way of doing it. And of course, then you can take your, your chisel again and put it, break it up and pick up your sandstone. And that's it. Slide to side. But let's have a look at what we've got in here now. So I've got two and a half stacks of that. Ah, and what's happened over here is, I didn't show you this unfortunately, it put the gunpowder into here. So we should have one and a half, nearly one and a half stacks of gunpowder. I'll do that again. Uh, because it doesn't hurt. You need plenty of gun, you need plenty anyway. So let's take a stack of this again. Yes, I got one that time, that's good. Let's put it into here. We can then see it going through. And there you go. And so it should first of all go to the crusher, which is over here. Let's just hop through there. So that's the crusher there. The middle one. As you can see, it's dark green box. Goes into that, gets crushed. And very quickly that will be sent back again. And then you just come into the purification chamber, which is here. Or well, factory in this case. And as you can see, this is it's not that easy to see but that's dark blue and these are coming as dark blue boxes so then I get to be converted to flint and then the flint is going to go out and back again so let's go time what have we got we should have crusher again so that should be dark green again and that will be producing gunpowder What's now going to happen is the gunpowder is going to come along here and end up into this hopper. So that should then be coloured yellow. The yellow pattern, strangely enough. It looks sort of slightly yellow. And there we are. And if we look at this now, we should have, end up with another stack and 31 left over. we go now what I want to do today is actually something slightly different 
It's night time now, and I'll oh, take around this side. Probably should move this around a bit actually because it's a bit difficult to see. I keep coming across here. What have I got? That's fine. So you see here the temperature is going slightly down because it's night time. Oh, it should be over time, it'll go down slightly. Anyway, my brine is already full, and so it's actually not producing anymore. But what you can do to make this more efficient is to create another component and we're going to create the resistive heater. But what I'm going to do, let's have a look at the recipe for resistive heater because I've forgotten. Probably should remove some of these items from my inventory. Let's get rid of the chisel and bits items anyway. So I don't really need that one and I don't need the chisel and I don't need the bag. And I don't need the pattern. I'll put the pattern down here though. And I think that's everything from there, so that's fine. And probably should get rid of some of these vanilla bits as well. That's vanilla parts and building blocks. I'm going to put the wood in here for the time being. And I'm going to get rid of the sandstone that's in here. So even with a even with a tool in your hand that works fine. So now we need the resistive heater. It's spelled IS, isn't it? This one. So that is basically made with four tin ingots, one energy tablet, and one superheating element. This is new. This is one machine frame, four copper ingots, and four redstone. So we just need to get the stuff out of that, out of here. So we needed four tin, if I remember rightly, four copper, some redstone. We need the machine frame. And we need some batteries, so we need some gold and some more redstone and some enriched iron. We always need enriched iron for everything we make, so that's not a surprise. So here we go, let's make that, and I should be able to simply plus craft that into here. So we now have a superheating element, and we should be able to make this as well. I just need to make the battery first. Now we should be able to make this, no problem at all. Okay. Now, in my chest here, I have got, I think, lots of... Oh, I've got some basic universal cable anyway. Probably enough. And what else do I need? I need some th another pipe. And the pipe we need is thermal... Con I think it's a thermal conduit. A thermal dynamic conduit. This one. So that's made with... Steel ingots, one copper ingot, and that'll make eight. And actually, that's plenty. We'll just make eight. So we need two more steel ingots, which I've got plenty of at the moment, and one copper ingot, like that, and we can make a, some pipe. Don't ask me why I put that in the middle, so the bottom doesn't make any difference, really. So now we can come around here, and we can attach these. Actually, we're going to put it down here like this. Let's say we put it here. Yep. And I'm going to take the this and I'm going to well, I need to probably need to make a another um valve for this. But anyway, let's just finish off this there so that I can't see them. It's night time. In fact it might be worthwhile having a quick sleep so we can see things better. There we go. Right. So what we do is we attach the pipes around here like this. I have to shift for click the first one. So I hit my detach. Like that. And we'll do the same around here. Because it was actually strange that you can actually use the, th the um, solar panels to actually use them for power. And solar panels are reasonably expensive and also quite a lot of crafting. So it's well worth doing that like that and then we take this one down to here uh, probably need to rotate this but we'll take one down here like that and rotate this where is my configurator here we are and now I need to change this back to wrench mode I think and I should be able to right click that so that now connects into here and it's actually as you can see it went red straight away or pink so if we right click uh, this let's just take that like that you'll see it's a it's actually turning it's got temperature in Kelvin let's change that to um, 
Celsius. And then you can see in Celsius it's coming up. Slowly this is raising, it probably rise up to about 100 degrees, I think. And what we can then do is we can actually take this basic thermal so that thermodynamic co uh, conduit and put it onto here like this. And it doesn't connect up yet because we need to replace this block with a valve. So let's make another valve. In fact, I think I might even have one made. I've got some in here, which I'm going to use. Actually, I'm going to do those next. And in fact, I need another valve. So let's just make another valve. Uh, I think that's the recipe for that. Try that again. Okay, so we need basically four thermal evaporation blocks and one advanced circuit, control circuit. So you can do it from your container. Huh? See, that's reasonably expensive compared to the other ones. So what we're going to do now, we're going to dig up that block on the bottom here. Hopefully it doesn't disappear anyway. In fact, what I'll do is I'll wrench off this to start with. I'll take this one easier then. All right, picked up that block. Now we'll put down the valve here. And you see it reforms. And then we can put down the, not the universal cable, but the dynamic cable. And you see this now connects. And if we go around to the control panel, uh, now at the back, you can see that the temperature is raised is rising and it's actually also beginning to rise at night time too so we're going to get a, le a lot more power out of this but having said that these machines have all got um, this is the old way of doing the, the salination block but you can actually do it a different way let's have a look at that in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to make something else first I'm going to make the atomic disassembler I haven't built one of those, and I don't ask me why, probably because I wasn't that familiar with it. And this is quite a neat tool. So basically, we, we need one engine tablet, one atomic alloy, and if you remember, that's the osmium version of the reinforced alloy, which is the diamond version of the enriched alloy. It's fairly straightforward. So we need a battery first of all. We've got three gold, we need another three, like that. We need one of these. Uh, we've already got enough redstone and that, so we should be all right for doing this. Let's have a look. Uh, we need an osmine ingot too, so we can get one of those. One osmine refined osmine ingot. Now I should be able to assemble this. Here we go. And this thing is actually quite neat. It acts basically like a pickaxe, a hoe, in fact, it seems to be the best thing to have for a hoe, so because it can actually hoe a five by five area. Let's right-click this in here and put that into the into the plus and let it charge up. It, it takes about one million joules, I think, which I've still got joules. I prefer RF, but that's just my choice. There we go, one million joules. One million joules, by the way, is um, going again. Is I think two and a half times. RF. Oh yes, 400 RF. 400,000 RF, is that? Okay. So, what I was going to do was to do some digging, wasn't I? Now this thing has lots of different modes. I'm thinking I'm going to do it here for the time being. So at the moment it's in normal mode, but if I shift right click this, it's slow mode, fast mode, uh, vein off. If you do it off, you can't dig anything up. It just acts as a, as a sword. So let's go to normal mode. Normal mode is reasonably fast. Oh, I want to do it. One, two, three, four. Oh, have I done five? No. I'm going to do this my standard design to start with. Basically, putting it one one block underground like this. Right, that's a four by four block. I hope. So what we can do with the um, thermal evaporation plant is we can actually build this so that it doesn't require solar panels. So we're going to build the smallest one, in the way, which is basically like this. 
we're going to put the control panel here. And then we would need to put in here four solar panels, but actually I'll also put in some valves too while I'm thinking about this. Where should we put the valves? I'm not 100% sure at the moment. To be dead honest with you. I should put one on this side over here so we can get some water from that other from the same pump. Did I pick that up? Probably not. Nope, went through here. And we'll do one on the other side over here. For the same reason. Like that. Mechanical pipe. I should have some mechanical pipe in my magic box. Basic mechanical pipe 64. Alright, put that one back and we'll use these. What I'm going to do is just drag this water from here to here basically. So, uh, where should we take it from here, I think? And it's not connecting up because it's not yet formed. Now, if I put solar panels on here, it'll form, but I can also do this. And this allows you to actually put it underground. So if you put just ordinary blocks around the sides like that, when I put the last one, it'll form. There you go, formed. Let's go around here and have a look. So now it's formed. Now it's getting water in. It shouldn't get much temperature because it's not got anything to give it heat. So we need to give it some heat. In fact, I think I've got to make another valve in that case. And we're going to make something else. We're going to make a fuel wood heater. So let's just have a look at what uses of this is because it'll give me fairly straightforward. Oh yes, I need the advanced control circuit. Like that. And we're going to make a fuel wood heater. And that's this device here. So that consists of one basic control circuit, two uh, furnaces, five steel and one casing casing straightforward as well so we've got casings already made up five steel one basic and two furnaces like that and this thing takes solid fuel so it takes coal or charcoal or maybe wood as well i haven't tried wood So let's do that on, say, I can put it down here to start with. In fact, I think you can put it straight down like that and it connects. Let's put some fuel into it. And then let's come over here and see if that's now going up. Actually, you can see it's already producing brine at 0.5 buckets a tick, but the temperature is very low. Maybe I need to connect this up. You see the fuel wood heat is working. So you can see it's lit up, but it probably isn't producing, putting any heat into here yet. So let's put one of these down like that. And then that is connected, and it should be immediately getting temperature right into here. Now, therefore, this thing can be in, into ground, and it's also producing 12 milli buckets a tick, so it's fairly, so it's quite, quite effective, effective. And this is only a, th a three, height of three, whereas compared to this one, which is a height of 18, and the temperature is still rising up. If we leave this, it'll actually carry on rising even overnight. So what I want to do next, I've forgotten to do this, I should have done it to start with actually, is to create another energy cube. This one. So we need two batteries, that's 12. I haven't got enough gold, that's six gold, isn't it? And we need one of these. Let's have a look. Has it gone to? There. Oh, we need the steel casing too. Did I get that? Two of those, yes I did. So I should be able to make an energy cube now. Oh, two iron ingots missing. you can do also I'm going to show you this as well let's just take a I'm going to make a new just a tank I've got 
a need for a tank, but we'll soon find out. It doesn't actually matter whether it's a, a fuel, a, a basic fluid tank or a gas tank. We can just take one. Probably needs just. I just need some four iron for that, and we're running out of iron in here. But I'm going to also make some tier items. Like this, and I'm going to make these the advanced tier installers. So basically, that's one piece of wood, two osmium, and two advanced control circuits, and four enriched alloys. Now that's fairly straightforward. Would have got two in here. That's great. And two of these. I should have enough of that and enough of that. That should be sufficient. Oh, osmium I needed, wasn't it? I've forgotten how many. Uh, just two. So I should be able to make two of these. So I'm missing. Oh, I need two more advanced control circuits to make the two. I don't think these stack actually. No, they don't. Now what you can do, I actually put one down here already. Is you can take your tier items like this, and this is a, this is a basic tank, so you can simply right click this with a with a tier upgrade and it upgrades it in place and you do can do that on almost any of these things so you can do that on here but this is already advanced you can do it on machine obviously we've done it already on machines but you can do it on anything you want you can't do it on that because there's nothing there's no versions of that but you can do it on gas tanks too and you can do it on oh, energy cells that's what I was going to do on let's come around here and I'm going to replace this block here like that and I'm going to put in here the energy cell we created like this and I'm going to do it because the output by default is the facing side and when you put things down it's the facing side so you can see this is already getting power and if I simply right click this with the upgrade it'll upgrade it to an advanced and you'll see here it's got it can what's the maximum output is 1.28 Oh, 128,000 RF per tick. It doesn't actually tell you what the capacity is, but I'm looking at this, give it as far as I can see. Storing. Should somehow some tell you the thing. I think it was. No, it doesn't tell you. So this is now storing the energy from the solar panels. Even at night time, I think it was actually going up. Now it's going down. So that's now playing, uh, giving the resistive heater some power. I'll just go around here again. I'm probably going to move this control panel anyway. And so you'll see the temperature is actually dropping slightly. So what we can then do is we can come around here and we can right click this and change this amount. So at the moment it's doing 40 RF. So we can quite happily do 100, I think, because the in fact we can do a lot more. Let's have a look at this again. It's still dropping in temperature. In fact, probably into this one or two times. So these ones, the solar panels, which we can't quite reach now because they're hidden. Let's go around the front, probably the easiest place. These ones can generate 240 RF per tick. So I can quite happily give this four times that which is 960 or something like that we can we can do less than that so we could actually take 240 RF in here and let's click that one and the temperature will carry on going up so we're still in degrees centigrade here but the power going down here probably because this is full but after a full day cycle I mean empty after a full day cycle let's quickly sleep And those toggle modes, by the way, show you the amount of energy it uses in the different modes. So you now see this is going, power's going up a lot. And the temperature is also going up. And of course, the temperature on here will also be going up as well. And I think by one or two days, this will actually re be reaching several thousand degrees C. So it then produces tons of brine. The reason we need tons of brine is for the next sort of 
I think for the reactors, which I think is really for the next couple of episodes. I've been looking at um, turbines, but not having so much success with turbines. And with the steam boiler. The reason for that is the, um, what I've got to come out here is to demonstrate these things as well. So at the moment, the atomic disassembler, I think, is in normal mode. A normal mode will do a 3x3 three three hose. So right click that there, 3x3. Three three. So if I then change this to fast mode, shift right click it, now it's slow. That'll do one, like that. Now the next one will be fast. And then it'll do 5x5, five five, just making an area that's actually got 5x5 five five space, like that. And as you can see, these things turn into very quickly back to dirt from hoed ground. So you have to be quite quick putting those down. But also it has this, if we come down here saying we'll chop this tree down, let's pick one of these trees like this. It basically acts like, acts like a, a very fast actually. I've got, I'm on fast mode, aren't I? So let's go back here. And the next level is vein like that. I can't reach that piece now. Let's go. I can't reach the stand on the leaves over here somehow or other get that thing. Uh huh. I should be able to jump on top, shouldn't I? And do it from below. I can't do it. Wee, too far. This one wasn't it. There we go. So that, that, that works pretty well on the tree. The leaves will slowly disintegrate. No, but if I've got it into vein mode, I'm going to do this. It does the whole tree in one go. So it's a pretty effective way of, of harvesting wood. And you'll see that there, there's leaves, but nothing there, all the wood's gone. So that's a bit like the Tinker's Construct item. Uh, for stone and sand and stuff like that, for non-blocks, non it, it's very effective too. Let's go and have a quick look at doing that. In fact, let's quickly go do it the fast way. My inventory's a weeny bit full. So let's take the portable teleport and teleport there, wherever I come out. If I come back here, if I come in here again, I'll come back in the base. And if I then come downstairs here, now we've still got this on vein mode, haven't we? I should bring this railway track up the top here, shouldn't I? It's quite a fast way of travelling, and it's probably a better way of travelling anyway, because if you're in if you're in the minecart and it's downhill, push you quite along quite fast. That was a piece of copper. I'm not going to mind that. I'm going to go further away. See here I've been mining obsidian. So this thing will actually mine obsidian for us. I'm not 100% sure if I've got this. I'll try this piece over here. So we're on what at the moment? I think we're on slow mode. So that was fairly slow, wasn't it? So we'll look at this now. Oh, we're on vein, aren't we? So that's off, that's normal. Let's see how it works with normal. About the same speed, I'd say. Uh, so let's go to slow. Well, that was going to be much slower, so let's go to the next one after that was fast. That's a weeny bit faster. I might just stand down there, just make sure I'm reasonably safe before I do this. There's some Osbian. I'm not going to mine that Osbian. Because I know there's lava behind there. But what I am going to do is I'm going to go back up here to where we've got the outside sort of the caves. The caves aren't very far away actually. seconds not too long this episode sort of been a, a sort of mix of doing different things I hope that's okay with you here we go so around here we've got the spider spawn here which is lit up so it's not spawning any any mobs at the moment and then we can use this here like this fairly fast very fast actually in fact I'm gonna have to put So 
so where do I want to go and do some mining I think down here there's some stuff there's another spider spawner there some coal here so if I mine the coal just mind it like normal you can't enchant this by the way that's a sort of main disadvantage so you're not getting any benefit but it's fairly it's very fast but now let's change this now into the next mode which is actually vein mode I'll come along here and then do some vein mining uh, I think there's some blocks around here we can mine some coal over there in fact if I fly up it probably easier there's some gold that's water we can put the water away that's just uh, must have some cobblestone or something with us at the moment actually even a bucket will do and my inventory is full okay we'll have to empty out the inventory first of all uh, that wasn't clever either was it um, <laughs> let's go and pick up my personal chest I wanted to open the personal chest without picking anything up so, there we go. so you have to be out of range of everything so we, we don't need these pipes with us at the moment we can also get rid of the obsidian and the coal and the thermal blocks and we don't need the glowstone panels with us and that and that that'll be fine for the time being get rid of the tree as well don't need that so this one actually has got mending as well so that's pretty good but this one's the other one with silk touch you can in, you can enchant those actually what I want to do is get some cobblestone or something to pluck up that or even the bucket I think I was going to use buckets are good to have in mind anyway it's a bit hard but got it right so now with the vein with this being in mine mode it actually mines up just well it's like one piece there and this time it's a whole chunk of redstone I don't know how many pieces it picked up so look because we didn't have any on us before picked up 35 and here's copper how many did that pick up picked up two so it picks up however many they're about so get rid of that and coal let's have a look so it's done all of that stuff over there get rid of that get some more string so you see that's what the miner does it's pretty effective uh, for mining it doesn't do that much for stone when you're mining stone but that's fine it's fast enough and it uses power so how much does it got at the moment is basically got it was 400,000 wasn't it so now it's 300 it hasn't used that much in fact as it happens so back home I still put back home we should be back where we started from and I'm going to say goodbye and until next time hopefully I shall be doing some more stuff the next time on turbines and stuff and until then bye for now